Now let's read through draggable cat.racket. Here we have our Big Bang function. And here we've added a clause in which we respond to mouse movements by calling world after mouse event. Here is our new data definition for world in which we have paused huh and selected huh defined. And here we have eight different example worlds that we will use for testing. In our first four, the cat is unselected. And then we have four more worlds in which the cat is selected. Here is the data definition for falling cat key event with its template and examples. And here's a data definition for falling cat mouse event, which we talked about earlier. In world after tick, we extract the pieces of the world, the fields in the world, and pass them to world after tick helper, as usual. We modify world after tick helper so that if the cat is either paused or selected, it does not fall. We now have four tests for world after tick. to cover cats that are either paused or unpaused, and selected or unselected. The tests for unselected cats are exactly the same as those from falling cat. Because we use mnemonic names for the different example values, we didn't need to change these tests at all. In world to scene, we place the cat image at the world x coordinate rather than at a constant x coordinate. World after key event is unchanged, but world after, excuse me, world with paused toggled is now modified to include the selected field. Next, we have world after mouse event. For its test suite, we have our 12 combinations, plus we have a test for an example mouse event that should be ignored. Here is the de function definition, and here are our tests. We have our 12 regular tests, plus we have a test for another mouse event. Now we can't run these tests until after the helper functions are defined, so we now define the helper functions. We'll have three help functions, one for each kind of mouse event. World after button down, world after drag, and world after button up. A button down event inside the cat should return a cat just like the current cat, except that it is selected. A button down event that is not in a cat will return the cat unchanged. This is a simple structural decomposition. A drag event on a selected cat should move the cat to the position of the mouse. That is, world after drag should return a world, that is to say a cat, just like the current one, except that it is now centered on the mouse position. A drag event that is not on a selected cat is ignored. So world after drag returns the world W unchanged. A button up event should unselect the sel a selected cat. So the code says that if the world, that is to say the cat is selected, world after button up should return world just like the given one, except that the cat is unselected. Again, this is a simple structural decomposition. Observe that I've named the arguments to the mouse functions 
MX and MY to remind me that these are the coordinates of the mouse, not the coordinates of the cat. Last, we have in cat. Since the shape of the cat is irregular, I decided that clicking within the bounding box of the cat was good enough. Let's take a look at that. Here is the cat in its bounding box. The rectangle is image width of cat image wide and image height of cat image high. If W is the width of the rectangle and H is its height, then the rectangle runs from x0 minus W over 2 to x0 plus w over 2 in the x direction, and from y0 minus h over 2 to y0 plus h over 2 in the y directions. Remember, y increases as you move down the page. Taken together, these two observations tell us exactly when an arbitrary point xy is inside the rectangle. Now we can go back to draggable cat and look at in cat, huh? Note that this is structural decomposition, not function composition, because we are looking at the fields of the world or the cat. And now you can also see why it was useful to define the constants half cat width and half cat height. And last, we have some simple tests for in cat, huh? And now we run the various test suites.